Welcome to the Healthy Perspective Podcast with your host, chiropractor, entrepreneur, mentor, and author, Dr. Chris Bowman. He'll break down and extract the secret sauce behind his own success and the success of some of the top leaders in every category and from around the world. Get ready for your weekly mental adjustment because shift is going to happen. All right, what's up, everyone? My name is Dr. Chris Bowman. I am a chiropractor at Trailhead Family Chiropractic in Southern California. Today, we have the opportunity to interview Dr. Hutton from Mulberry Clinics in Tennessee. Um, Dr. Hutton, thanks so much for coming on. You bet, Chris. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Appreciate that. Yeah. So we uh, we met at a homesteading conference in uh, near his hometown, I suppose, in, in Tennessee a couple months ago. And uh, what I saw on the docket, there was a um, homesteading for health and the the science of it. I was like, oh, I'm going to that one for sure. And and I was sitting in, in his talk and I'm like, oh my word, this is everything that I say in, in a lot of my workshops that I teach. And it's so inspiring to see it coming from an MD, someone willing to share um, science that's been peer reviewed rather than corporate backed. Um, it's so yeah. good to hear somebody just be, be real and, and talk about what's worked for their family instead of kind of tiptoeing around what insurance or you know mainstream media would want them to say um and yeah. the cool thing is it wasn't anything controversial it was much as yeah. you know like hey sunlight is is good getting in the dirt right. is is good yeah. but a lot of the times you just don't you don't hear that um right. so i'd love to hear and we talked about it a little bit um at the conference but just a little bit of your story starting you know as an md and and then what led you into practicing, you know, more, more of an integrative, holistic approach. Um, and then what I'd really like to get into as well, you see a lot of families, obviously you have a, a big family yourself. Um, mm -hmm. And I think just some general, maybe top, you know, couple of things that, that you are um, hard fast on, like this is a health habit in our family that we don't bend on. What are some yeah. things that you can kind of, you know, leeway, like, you know, for my family going out to dinner, we'll have dessert or, you know, something like that. Um, yeah. And then what are some things that, you hear a lot of parents put pressure on themselves and on their family, but it's really might not be that big of a deal. So um, yeah. I'll, I'll lead you as we go, but um, your story would be an awesome place to start. All right. Yeah. Like you said, I'm an MD uh, pre pretty much trained in a conventional manner. I went to uh, uh, university of Arkansas and went through a pretty, what I, what I would imagine is typical medical education. I got my undergrad at a small Christian college in Arkansas, uh, Harding University, and studied uh, biology there. And I knew that I wanted to um, do something with science. I was raised under the tutelage of my scientific science father. He was a science teacher and loved being outside. And we just spent a lot of time outdoors hunting and fishing and hiking and camping. And uh, always was uh, impressed with the design of creation and how everything kind of worked together to support itself and human health. And um, of course, my faith background reinforced that um, growing up. And then, um, so I went to um, this college and I knew I wanted to study science, but I wasn't sure in what direction I wanted to take that. And so I went sort of into the biology building and uh, just, you know, wanted to learn. I was just a sponge trying to learn just as much as I could. And I loved uh, some of the basic biology classes that we had. I mean, some of my favorite ones were the ones that we had to go out on, uh, on field trips and find bugs and different things and classify them and stuff like that. I didn't do quite as well in the being inside stuck in the, in the lab and organic chemistry and all that, but I tolerated it enough. Um, so I met this, um, girl who was, a, became a friend of mine and she kind of helped me get through calculus and she was asking me what I wanted to do with my life. And I, uh, had explored some options and she was actually on track to go to med school. She was a pre-med and wanted to go to med school. And, um, actually she wanted to move to Africa and become a medical doctor overseas as a missionary. And that seemed intriguing to me. Um, I hadn't, 
I had thought about it a little bit and then I just went and talked to um, some folks and then I went and volunteered at an emergency room in town and started trying to get a little bit more exposure in the medical field and um, I liked that as well and um, so I, that's the direction that I took and went uh, and became pre-med around that time and started sort of the trajectory of going to medical school. Um, interestingly, not with a lot of background personally in medicine. I was I joke with people that for whatever reason, my parents, like, I don't hardly ever remember going to the doctor that much. I'm not even sure, like, we went for routine checkups. Uh, I don't think they were opposed to it. I'm just not sure they thought about it or they were they were very um conservative with money and so maybe they just thought well it was maybe an unnecessary expense uh uh so like i don't remember ever taking any medicines I, like if i had pain or anything i don't i just don't remember taking any like when i got to med school i literally had to learn like what ibuprofen was <laughs> like i just didn't even know like people were like Tylenol and I, like, I just, I mean, I was starting from scratch, wow. which, you know, in retrospect is kind of cool, you know, yeah. to go to med school, not even knowing what ibuprofen right. is. So, so let's see, finished med school and, you know, again, it was fine. I, I enjoyed it. I love learning. Um, but midway through it was a lot, it, you know, it was just a lot of classroom, a lot of sitting in front of books and computers inside, which is, which, you know, if my staff will tell you right now, like, it's hard to keep me inside. So, like, if I have a break between my patients, they usually go outside and look for me. I'm usually sitting on the picnic table or awesome. back of my truck, sitting in the sun, you know, uh -huh. grabbing a bite to eat or walk, going for a walk or something. I just feel better outside. So, yeah. that's where I go. Well, just take off the roof of your clinic then. Yeah, I should do that. <laughs> well, people have asked me, like, why don't you just have a – my dream one day is actually to have sort of a – a uh clinic but like maybe like in a greenhouse or something there like you that, go you just like have these herbs in this garden and then people can come in for consultation and so we'll see there you go so as i just went through med school i stayed connected to this girl and she actually got married and moved to africa and i talked to her mom and so a friend of theirs invited me to go over there and and learn about what medicine was like over there and that was great and end up going through all my training and uh, through my training kind of being aware of what af what medicine looked like on a more global scale like I just kind of had this perspective of you know I realized I was learning kind of how things were done in the United States but I was also right. like okay well how do you do it elsewhere like how right. do they do it in Africa right. how do they do it in yeah. Europe how do they do it in all those places and it's different really um, and then ended up moving to Uganda through a bunch of courses of events, got married in med school, moved to Uganda, lived there for five years. Mm -hmm. And, and I think I mentioned this in my talk, but just kind of had enough, enough, just barely enough wisdom to understand that like taking trunks and trunks and containers of prescription medications to Africa to sort of hand out to everybody is just, it's not probably the most effective long-term strategy for improving the health of a community. And so just thinking creatively about, about how to approach that and then understanding that like, you know, yes, maybe there are challenges that health challenges that folks there have, but they've been getting by okay for a long time like right. there are people there that know how to take care of sickness right. and so just having enough humility to go in and learn from them mm. and just say okay well when you get sick what do you do like when you have this and this and this what do you do like yeah. you know and, and just really trying to learn and encourage that and then see you know hey here's what we would do what do you do here's you know if we see a baby that's dehydrated here's what we do what do you do and then just right. really and it actually worked out really well like because some really positive things happened with the folks that realized that I wasn't just there to sort of impose my Western yeah. will on them and tell them what to do. Um, so we had this sort of symbiotic learn from each other relationship. And um, and then I grew in a, a greater appreciation for the, the, the power of just nature, the power of, I mean, we lived on the equator. So we're outside in the sun 
like we would go swimming on Christmas. Like it's just, you're just, um, you know, there's plenty of sun, all the food's pretty much fresh, although they're trying to, you know, change that and commercialize a lot right. of things with grocery stores and stuff, but fresh food's easy to get. They're just very well versed with herbs and different remedies and things like yeah. that, that, that I learned a lot from. And, uh, so just came, and then, so I came back to the United States. So we lived there five years, came back to the United States about eight years ago and, um, just knew I had a lot to learn and wanted to continue to do that. And yeah. so it's been a journey for me and my family, you know, how to incorporate what I learned conventionally in my medical training. Mm. And I mean, there's a lot of value there. I mean, it's not <clears throat> worthless, sure. but sure. then trying to figure out, well, are there other good ways to do things that again, sort of follow those principles of sustainability and yeah. regeneration and connection to the earth and making use of, of, you know, simple things that we have and right. trying not to be uh, completely um, dependent on resources and sources that can sort of go away at any moment. And yeah. kind of there. So, and it's fun, you know, it just takes me back to sort of the time walking through the woods and camping and stuff as a kid, right. with my dad, you know, and just, right. so, so my passion now is, you know, I don't know how they all exactly blend together and, but my passion now is, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's kind of regeneration on a, on a big scale, personal spiritual regeneration, earth regeneration, which I think can be a mission mm -hmm. of people, um, should be a mission of people, um, re, you know, regenerative agriculture, um, which is, you know, homesteading and sort of that movement that seems to, I think more people are waking up to and becoming yeah. aware of, I think, I think re like in the past, it was kind of like, oh, that's really cute and a neat thing to do. But I yeah. think people now are like, okay, we really got to do this. Right. Like, like our soil is just gonna, we're just gonna run out. Like we just, you know, so yeah. I love doing that. Yesterday, a, a buddy of mine bought, bought, a, bought a bunch of acres near our house and we just spent a couple hours walking around just kind of dreaming and looking at the soil and looking at the plants and yeah. getting a vision for for what could happen there um as uh, as you know stewards of creation sort of um do what we're supposed to do you know and take yeah. care of the land and each other and yeah and creatures and stuff like that so yeah that's, that's good like. yeah that's good and, and it's it's really inspiring to see you know you, you spend so much time and money and dedication and really sacrifice being in an environment like in school where you really you know don't really want to be in a sense may not even you know belong yeah. and you go somewhere and, and learn something that isn't necessarily against everything that you that you learned but yeah. it's very different like you know and so it's it's yeah. cool for for you to see you know be willing to be like okay i sacrificed for this and i'm not going to hold on to this just because I spent time and money learning it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and yeah. I think that's unfortunate, you know, and, and I, I've talked to a lot of medical doctors, a lot of nurses, especially through, um, you know, this, this pandemic where everything is, is um, just different. People are just, are just thinking and asking, you know, different questions, which has been a blessing and a, you know, problem, you know, yeah. all, at, all at the same time. Um, so patients that are looking to incorporate more of a healthy, um, you know, more of a healthy lifestyle, I think, you know, unlike you, most people turn to things like Tylenol or, you know, uh, things that they, they want to make the symptoms, you know, immediately go away. And I know yeah. you can't say and don't want to say like specifically use use it here and don't use it there. Yeah. But maybe yeah. what's more of like a, a root cause, like behind the behind the scenes, the bigger picture of like when when um, we can really take take control of our own health habits that we can um, enforce that are going to be um, different than, than uh, I don't know, dependent on symptoms to change, you know, less reactive yeah. and more proactive. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, it's kind of like when we were walking around the, the fields yesterday and we're seeing like, we look at one, one plot, uh, food or forage that was planted and it's not growing well. We look at one across the path and it's growing much better rather than just go in and throw a bunch of fertilizer on the one that's not growing well so that it looks the same as the other one. You know, if you take 20 minutes and think and walk through there and dig in the soil and look at the water and the terrain and, and then what's around it, um, you can really gain a lot of insight into what's going on. 
and that's what I ask, that's what I tell people to do with their bodies as well. So like, rather than only take ibuprofen every day because you have a headache and, you know, yes, if you take 600 milligrams of ibuprofen every, you know, three times a day, sure, your pain might be reduced. You might, something might go away, but let's take a few minutes and think about why you're having headaches every day, you know, you know, because I, I tell people like these signs and symptoms are gifts and they're like the check engine light going off in your body saying, Hey, something's wrong. And instead of taking a piece of duct tape and slapping it over the check engine light, let's pull up, let's pull over and pop the hood and take a good look at what's going on. Yeah. Um, you know, and to your question about chiropractic earlier, my daughter was having headaches periodically and I've got a good friend that's a chiropractor. And so, you know, we tried some magnesium and making sure she's drinking enough and getting some sleep, but then I'm walking, you know, so she's a, she's a reader. She reads a lot at night. She likes to read in bed. Of course, most people have their eyes in front of some sort of screen now, and they have this like head forward posture. It's like, we're going back towards our Neanderthal roots with the way we're walking around with our heads right. down. And so I took, you know, I uh, took her into my buddy Brock and I was like, hey, check out her. It's like posture and spinal alignment and all that stuff. And I mean, you can just see her. She just walks around with like her head forward. And so mm -hmm. he talked to her about that and gave her some exercises to do and taped her back up and um, did a few mild, just real mild manipulation adjustments and things like that. You know, and the and the neat and you know things got drastically better. She just doesn't have headaches very much anymore, and she's now asking to go back. She's like, "Hey, when can I go back and see the chiropractor?" Right? Because cool. she saw the benefit of it. Right. Um, so that's like you know, it's just like with anything. If someone comes in like, "Hey, doc, I'm really depressed," you know, I'm like, "Okay, well, you know, here's what's typically done when someone comes to an MD. We talk about antidepressant medications and things right. like that." But let's also think of this as a check engine light. Like, yeah. you know, I say people don't come to me because they feel bad. They come to me because they don't like feeling bad. Right. And yeah. so I was like, well, something about what's ha something about the way you're feeling, you're not okay with. Right. So let's right. start there. And and in the same way, like if you if you like fell and broke your leg, I would certainly be okay with you putting a cast and using crutches. But we wouldn't stop there and say, okay, you're going to use crutches the rest of your life. We're going to put a cast, you know, we're going to do what we can to heal you and rehab you and get you walking again, take the cast off. So that's how I approach symptoms like that. I'm like, yeah, I, I mean, I do think suffering has its value in human existence. Mm -hmm. um, we can learn and grow from it. But as a physician, I'm, I'm not going to simply say, well, you're suffering I'm going to pat you on the head and say, go on your way. I'm here right. to relieve suffering in whatever way I can. Right. Um, but, but also encourage people to try to learn from the suffering, yeah. you know, pop the hood and take a good look at what's going on. That's uh, good. So that's how I use those things. Yeah, that's good. And, you know, we just bought some, uh, uh, we're trying out some new fertilizer, not, not like a, it's like an organic, um, almost like compost tea type of product. Nice. And, yep. um, it says on, on the back of it, all these like minerals and you know, stuff has been harvested from land where stuff has been growing and dying for hundreds of years. Yeah. And I'm just, I'm just thinking about that. And I'm like, man, death is a, an essential yeah. part of, you know, the, the re replenishing of the soil and, and the growth of, of new things yeah. and, yeah. and suffering is, you know, for the, for the plants, obviously it's interpreted differently than it is in, in humans, but like you see stuff. You know, I'll give you an example. In our in our raised beds, we we accidentally let our left our topsoil out that we ordered in the sun, and so when we started watering it, it got hydrophobic. So the mm. water was just dripping off of it, and yeah. I was like, I've never seen that. Like I thought dirt was just dirt; it just always accepts water. And yeah. we realized that it's the microbiome that actually is absorbing the the water, the bacteria, and, and whatnot. Yeah. And so yeah. we um, we we that's all we had. So we planted yeah. with it, and, and plants would shoot up and then start to start to yellow. And yeah. my wife got some uh, a blood meal, like, you know, fertilizer stuff. And yeah. literally, no, I'm not kidding you. Within the next couple of days, our cucumber plants had cucumbers on them. Flowers cool. that look like they're dying are now blooming. And it's, yeah. it's incredible. So instead of just like, oh, that was a bad plant. Let's right. rip it out and try a new one. 
I'm yeah. like, well, there's no reason this plant shouldn't survive. Let's just figure out yeah. what its needs are. And yeah. And I think that's what's difficult, you know, from, mm -hmm. from a new kind of like gardener, we don't, we're not really sure, like, does this work? Does that work? Let's just yeah. look at reviews on, on Amazon. Um, yeah. We can ask like other farmers and they're like, well, I don't have that problem. So I don't, I don't really know, you know, how to, how to answer that. Would yeah. you say that that kind of scenario is, is a good, I don't know, like metaphor for kind of what happened in a, in a maybe typical conventional situation where somebody you know a kid has like in my world a, a colic um, or ear infections or you yeah. know even headaches or you know stuff like that and they yeah. go to a medical doctor for answers are are people not getting and, it's, and I think you would agree that the right um the right care because they're, they're not maybe not asking the right questions like maybe they the mindset is I want my headaches gone tell me what I need to do but I really are they really meaning you know, am I just dysfunctional? Do I need to take something like spit yeah. the plant out and try a new one? Yeah. Yeah, totally. And I think even, even we can make the mistake sort of even from a sense of, well, I only, I only use natural medicine or I only use supplements or I only use nutraceuticals. And I've criticized my nutraceutical colleagues in the same way, because you'll have someone says, you know, I don't want any prescription medications. I'm not going to take Zoloft for my depression. Okay. And then they go see someone else and they walk out with L-theanine and GABA and magnesium and, you know, it, so they walk out with nine bottles of supplements. Sure. And I'm like, wait a minute. Yeah. You didn't want to take any chemicals for what's going on. And you just walked out with seven. Right. 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 And now, and now you're forking over $300 in supplements a month uh -huh. and you haven't fixed the problem, you know, right. like, so, so you can err on this, you know, either way you can make the same mistake. Yep. Um, yep. And that's kind of, yeah. And so that's, you know, if, it, you know, if you want to have a strong, healthy garden, you know, you, you say, okay, well, you know, forests are pretty strong and healthy. They do. Okay. You know, they've been right. around for a long time. Yep. Let's look at what's going on there. And there are certain principles that I think you can learn and then apply them in your garden or your fields. And then I think yeah. to human beings and, you know, it's, um, we kind of a decade, yeah, probably 20 years ago. Now we sort of rediscovered or, or figured out this hygiene hypothesis is that like, you know, a lot of times you get sick, uh, not because of the presence of a microbe, but because it has no competition, Yeah, you know? And so, so we have one particular, uh, microbe that sort of doesn't have any competition so it doesn't have to compete for nutrients and 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 all these other things and so it just takes off and then causes symptoms you know and, it, and that's sort of the analogy is sort of a weed or a monoculture in mm -hmm. in a garden or something like that mm -hmm. and you know as and i do think like garden soil per se soil analysis and stuff is super helpful but i think we have to approach it with a certain amount of humility yeah. and say look of all the billions of microbes that are in this garden i mean and nutrients and minerals and stuff to think that i can go in there and take a teaspoon of it and put it under a microscope and figure out which one is missing right. Right. i mean good luck right. <laughs> you know it's like right. you know what's missing is nature right and yeah. so and so there's a pretty complex creation design there that's pretty hard to sort of parse out and you know I mean, and sometimes, yeah, like you, you add some blood meal, you throw some magnesium in there and you get some good results. But to say, well, again, year after year, my solution is blood meal or my solution is more magnesium. Well, probably yeah. that's not going to work. Probably you're going to tip the system too far the other way. Yeah. So if we learn and we say, okay, we need to keep cover crop. We need to have plant residue on the surface. We need to disturb the soil as minimally. We need to encourage bacterial and yeast growth. And we need to have tons of diverse species in there. We need to not monocrop. Um, and we, you know, all those things don't disturb it. Don't step on it. You know, let all let, you know, and just kind of let, let those smart creatures do their job. They'll sort it out for us. We right. just have to cultivate them. Right. And that's what I tell people when they come into my office. They're like, well, my kid keeps getting sick. And they're like, what's wrong with him? And I was like, yeah, I could, I could run a hunt. I could run a viral panel. I could run a bacterial panel. I mean, yeah. I could do $10,000 in tests. Right. Um, and may, and maybe we will, or maybe we won't find something there to go after. 
Um, and it doesn't mean that we never do, but yeah. I, I, mean, I say, look, if we have the time and margin, what we need to do is strengthen the soil. We yeah. need to get the terrain healthy. So your immune system is way smarter than we are, I promise you. Mm -hmm. And if we can give you the minerals and the nutrients and all that stuff and let your body do its job, right. I promise you're going to have a much better result than me trying to figure out which exact yeah. organism is bothering you at this moment. Right. Um, you know, again, if I if it's clear someone has pneumonia or something going on, sure. maybe, you know, we'll treat right. them. But but yeah. in general, we say, hey, there's something disturbed here. Right. We need to we need to build that yeah. up. If you have a lifestyle of chronic pneumonia, like obviously we're not going to let you die, but let's right. <clears throat> figure out why it keeps coming back so that we don't have to keep treating it. You know. Yeah. That's good. Um, and I think, you know, it really does allude to lifestyle changes that go beyond just you know shop the perimeter of the store don't shop the interior you know because then people can just buy you know potatoes and and their fatty cuts of meat or you know whatever and it's like yeah. it's, it's not that's not still not the right way of, of thinking the goal is yeah. you know yeah. diversity and, and whatnot and you know i was thinking um you know my, I, as an entrepreneur and i'm sure you think this way too you know like casting vision that sort of thing like i wonder if like a a good like marketing program for our like style of practice like let's give everybody a basil plant with deficient soil like you know what i mean and let's okay yeah. now figure it out how to keep this basil plant alive now right. if you kept it alive use those same concepts that you use to figure out what the plant needed as yeah. you know for your own for your own yeah. health and your family's health that might be kind oh, of yeah. fun, the basil yeah. challenge yeah i'd love it that'd be cool, <laughs> cool. yeah um, well, do you take um, like telehealth patients? Are you only in um, people, see people in, in your hometown, or if there's a way somebody wants to connect with you, how would you like um, them to follow up? Or you not seen any new patients? Well, like any good doctor, I'm I haven't really embraced the marketing aspect of things as well as I should. We have a good website. It's Mulberry Clinic Spring Hill. Yeah, great. Uh, so Spring Hill is the town that that we're in. Um, okay. Mulberry Clinic, Spring Hill. I'm working on uh, a landing page for some of my stuff. I do have an Instagram account, doc, Dr. Homesteader, Dr. Homesteader. Yeah. And I do, uh, yeah, I do telehealth. Yeah, we've got, we've got patients from a lot of places around, around the United States. Um, we do some, a lot of local, local stuff too. Uh, yeah. But I do, uh, I do a lot of telehealth and uh, kind of my wheelhouse is, you know, it's, it's that patient that's been to a number of doctors. We've seen their primary care doctor and a few specialists and, yeah. and it's just, um, figuring out like what, what the common theme is among all the specialists, because a lot of times they don't communicate well with one another. Yeah. And then a lot of times just not getting answers, just, you know, people sort of telling them they're just, uh, you know, just depressed and, Right. And they're gonna be fine, or there's nothing really wrong, or or anything yeah. like that. So we actually do get even referrals from primary care docs around yeah. who you know who just maybe don't quite have the time to to put into uh, digging a bit a bit deeper, like like I like to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, so cool, we'll, awesome. I'll I'll make sure I post that um, um, in the link. So if they want to get a hold of you or if you find out more yeah. about you, um, they can do that. And we talked about it at the, the homesteading conference, the next project you're doing is your book, right? Yeah, that's right. I'm, I'm supposed to talk again at the homesteading conference in October and another physician challenged me to have my book done by then. So oh we'll gosh, see. October? Oh my word. That's I know, like, that's a pretty tall order, but yeah. we'll see. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, do do it in an environment that you love, you know, like re yeah. re outdoors when you're walking the field or something like that. And yeah. I'm sure it'll be much easier. For yeah. You. Yeah, it's all it's it's all right here up here right now. It's yeah. just getting it on, you know, on paper. Right. Which, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Well, Dr. Hutton, it was a pleasure. I don't want to take too much more of your time. Um, I'm I'm thankful that there are people like you that care about the person, that care yeah. about not just the immediate satisfaction, but can um, have vision for going into the future and seeing that if we, you know, continue to eat like we're eating now conventionally Monsanto crops, it's, it's not going to be good. If we continue yeah. to over medicate, over prescribe, under yeah. question, you know, under care in, in a sense, um, yeah. it's, it's not going to look good for our future generations. And I think that's why 
we get along so well it's it's because we have the compassion to help people and meet people where they're at but also care enough to push them forward and to think more into the future um and and i think that's what we need um for a change uh, almost in every system probably in, in, in america but especially our, our health system it's like let's start thinking about the consequences of our actions and what can we do now that's going to build a better future instead of just give us temporary you know relief um and uh, and i think you know there's enough of us kind of waking up and 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 most importantly not just not just waking up but connecting and and i and i think that's huge and i think i'm so thankful for you know, technology and, and whatnot, as much as we don't want to be in front of computers and phones, I'm thankful that, you know, we can connect um, yeah. and continue yeah. to build an alliance. Maybe I'm, I'm seeing some sort of like a, like a, a, a seminar, like a Dr. Farmer seminar or something like that. Like that would be, yeah, that would be pretty fun. Uniting all yeah. the a health seminar focused on farming. I don't know. Yeah, I, that sounds great to me. I'm in. Cool. All right, well, Dr. Cool. Hunt, thank, thank you. So it sounds like uh, your patients are, are lucky to have you as, as well. So uh, that's really cool. Cool. Thank you. I appreciate All right. that. All right. Well, I look forward to seeing you again down the road. Yep. Sounds good. Thanks so much. Thank you for listening to the Healthy Perspective podcast. To connect with Dr. Bowman, follow him on Instagram at Dr. Chris Bowman. Until next time, make shift happen.